What's going on, Unbox Nation? How you guys doing? If you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe and bell button to be notified for awesome future content. In today's video, we will be unboxing and reviewing Togart CE41 Dual Dashcam. So let's take a look what we actually have inside the box. Okay, some sort of uh, sticker, I guess for your car. A manual. Surprise, by sharing your experience. Your experience matter. Oh, it seems like uh, you give them a review or something, you might win a free accessory. And where is the camera itself? I think it might be in this box right here. All right, let's take it out. Yes, I was correct. This is the camera. Oof. As you can see, guys, the screen is easily smudgeable. It's the outside camera and the inside camera. Let's put that aside for now. And let's take a look. What do we have in a bigger box? Okay, this seems to be um, mount itself. Micro USB cable. Some sort of plastic too. And the charger for the car. Now let's clean this mess up and talk more about the specs of this camera. Togard CE41 has a high resolution CMOS sensor. It weighs approximately 86 gram and has a 1.5 inch LCD display. The front lens is a 170 degree high resolution wide lens and the rear lens is 140 degrees wide. Video resolution up front is 920 by 1080p and in the rear is 1080 by 720p. Video recording is MOV H.264 compression format and it's 920 by 1080, 30 frames per second up front and 1080 by 720, 25 frames per second in the rear camera. It has a JPEG picture format and photo resolution could be set to 12, 10, 8, 5, 3, 2 or even as low as 1.3 megapixels. It has a built-in microphone which you can turn on and off. Its approximate external dimensions is 4 point inches wide and 1.5 inches tall. It has a memory SD slot with a max support of 32 gigabytes and a mini USB. It is powered on by built-in lithium ion battery. When it comes to the mount of Togard CE41 guys, I want you to be aware that this mount is made completely out of the plastic. Therefore, within the future it might or might not break on you. If you think this is a big deal for you, this camera might not be for you because you will be sliding the camera onto the mount in and out every time you want to take it out the windshield, just like this. I wish they made the mount out of the metal instead. But unfortunately, this is what we have. And as you can see, it's kind of tough to slide in and out. When it comes to controls, this camera has five buttons. Power button, OK button, up button, menu button, and down button. To power on or off the camera, all you have to do is long press the power button, wait a second, and let go. To turn on or off the screen, just short press the power button. OK button in standby video or photo mode. If you short press it, it will start or stop the recording. 
in menu settings, short press OK button to confirm the selection and adjustment. In playback, short press of OK button will also select and play recorded files. In menu settings, short press to select an option or adjust the values with up button. In playback mode, short press to select media files, long press to switch front and rear media files. During vi video recording, short press to switch the front and rear camera display. Menu or mode button, if you short press it will take you to menu settings and if you press it twice it will take you to system settings. In standby if you long press the menu button it will switch between modes. Now you're in photo mode and now you're in playback mode. And if you long press it again it will take you back to video mode. Down button in menu settings short press to select options and adjust values and playback short press to select media files and long press to switch front and rear media files your video recording short press to turn on or off the audio recording as you can see the mic switches and it's on and now the mic is off when it comes to functions of Togart CE41, this camera has a 6 glass HD dual lens which allows the camera to simultaneously record front at 1920x1080p with 30 frames per second and inside of the ca cabin at 1080x720p with 25 frames per second. This provides sharp high quality videos and images and gathers evidence in case of an accident. Please hit that like button if you think the quality of a video in the dash cams is important because in my mind it is especially for people that are Uber, Lyft drivers or people who need to record both scenery and great road trips with their family. This camera is also equipped with night vision and HDR technology thanks to 4 infrared LED lights and f1.8 aperture can handle low light conditions and ensure great video quality even when it's late at night. The HDR technology helps to automatically balance the light and dark areas of the video which provides excellent color corrected video footage. One thing I like about this camera is that it has very compact body that won't be noticeable if you place it in a discrete location. Let's say all the way up by the mirror or all the way down by the dashboard which makes it ideal for discrete recording and won't be noticeable to the individuals outside of your vehicle. What do you guys think? Do you like the design of this camera or no? If you're worried about running out of storage do not be because thanks to the continuous loop recording camera will automatically overwrite the oldest footage. The 170 degree wide angle front lens and 140 degree cabin lens will help you capture up to four lanes of traffic and simultaneously record what is happening on the inside. Also, Togard CE41 has a G sensor which is acceleration collision sensor that during the accident will prevent the dash cam from deleting or overriding the footage when it detects a sudden shake or collision, which is a handy feature during unfortunate events. And God forbid, if something happens to you, you don't have to worry about whether or not you saved the footage for evidence. This camera is also equipped with parking monitor, which will automatically power on and start recording when it detects external force which is great feature that ensures safety of your car when you're not around your car. Guys, do not forget to smash that like button for all these cool features that this camera has. And please, comment down below and tell me how useful do you think they might be. Installation of this camera is fairly easy. All you have to do is attach the suction mount to your windshield, then attach the camera to the suction cup, and after the camera is securely attached to the mount, connect the power cable to the camera and insert it into the power source in your vehicle. 
Here's the actual footage from the dash cam guys. During the day, I think it does what the manufacturers promised. You can see up to four lanes in traffic and the HD video quality has proved itself. I didn't notice video breaking up or any glitches. Uh, during the day, the inside camera performs just fine. Like an outside camera, you can see the whole car. It remains the HD capabilities. And I think during the inside intrusion will clearly help you identify the intruder or give you the ability to have proof in case you get attacked. During the nighttime, you can also see almost four lanes of traffic. I think that if you were involved in an accident, you could clearly see whose fault it is. On the inside, the camera could be a little better during the nighttime. The footage is still pretty good. If your car is tinted, however, the visibility might get worse. Even though it has night vision capabilities, it is definitely some cheap IR sensor and it could be better for the price. I purchased this camera from Amazon for $69.99 and I think it's definitely too expensive for this camera. This is just my opinion and you can disagree with it guys. And despite the video quality being good, the reason I say that is because it is very cheaply made. Even the mount is made from very sloppy thin plastic and as we all know that's the part that should be most durable because you will most likely have to take the camera off the mount and put it back on for whatever reason. Another reason why I was very disappointed with this camera is because battery life is non-existent. No matter how many times I charged it and how long it still died on me within 2 minutes. So if you were planning on using it without the power cable, forget about that. This is it guys, we're at the end of our video. If you found this video helpful or learned something new that you didn't know before, please like, subscribe and comment down below what products you'd like to see reviewed in the future. And don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified when those products are being reviewed.